world, I'm Maya Sundermeyer, and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode in my blog series. Now, um, right at this very moment in time, I am talking about what it is like to live on the autism spectrum, and uh, it's how I see the world to how I tackle everyday problems, and I also want to give advice to other people who live on the autism spectrum but don't know what to do. But, you know, as uh, LeVar Burton stated in, uh, in the series uh, Reading Rainbow, you don't have to take my word for it. Um, at any rate, you're more than welcome to listen and see what you think. And if you don't like what I have to say, please uh, be sure to comment below. But don't be rude. Just tell me what I should do differently. But anyway, um, it, last time I uh, did an episode, I talked about what, what you know, what it was like for me, uh, uh, and why I struggled for fr struggled with making friends, and uh, that was because I uh, had uh, done, you know, given off several uh, uncomfortable body languages uh, in the perceptions of others. Uh, like I mentioned, I looked down. I would walk fast. I would look down and go hello, and then I would, and, and then I would just zoom away and uh, move on to the next thing of my life because I was quote in my own world. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about the difficulty um, in making other friends, um, you know, and uh, the way other people uh, viewed someone like me. Uh, now, uh, and I'm going to start off with my childhood. I mean, during my childhood, I had an easier time making friends and and um, and talk and getting along with people because they just, because they shared some of the same interests. But it was around the age of ten that others started to notice a difference against me, and I I mean, some people called me retard, dork, freak, whatever. Uh, I remember one time. Uh, on the last day of fourth grade, before summer vacation began, um, a group of girls who I was hanging out with had uh, decided to get together to uh, play the game light as a feather, stiff as a board, and I wanted I, th I wanted to play too. And I remember everybody was be everyone was begging at once, try me, try me, and I I jumped in and said, try me, try me, and. Uh, the leader of the group, who I would appear to get along with me in the past, looked at me and she said, "No, Maya," and she just pushed me away. And uh, they you know, they had their little group. And then later on, um, when they were doing a little class presentation as a as a farewell for the summer, I asked them why they didn't include me. And and one of the girls said, "Yeah, well, that's because you didn't know what you were doing, <laughs> or that's because you didn't know it." So they just they pushed me away. Um, I had also managed to go into my own world um, in the middle of class a lot and uh, do imitations of uh, of the Beast from Beauty and the Beast because Disney's Beauty and the Beast had recently hit theaters and I just I couldn't get enough of it because I saw the film once and and I was waiting for it to come out on video so I could watch it over and over again to understand what was going on and then I had the mind of maybe a, maybe a preschooler and they had the minds of regular ten-year-olds. So, again, they didn't understand what was going on. Um, and I also uh, had uh, made friends with another girl that had other special types of uh, uh, handicaps than me. Uh, she wasn't autistic. She had, uh, had what psychologists preferred to as LD or learning disability and uh, she had uh, she, I mean, she knew that uh, something was wrong, but she let me get away with it. Like, uh, I had very limited topics, and the majority of the topics I talked about uh, during, for four years, were um, anything that revolved around Disney. And she was interested in, in arts and crafts, she was interested in learning about horses, and, and different types of saltwater fish, and different types of cats, and... Uh, different types of birds, but uh, I mean, she uh, I, I said things that got on her nerves, and yet uh, neither she nor her mother really helped me. And then uh, that relationship uh, went kasplat 
after she met her first boyfriend at the age of 12. And I was here, I, there he was at age 14, still acting like an eight year old. And I was wanting to watch Disney movies and um, engage in, uh, oh, I don't know. You know, just engage in anything Disney. And that uh, that bothered her, and then she thought she th she basically felt like I was a pest. And uh, this is while she wanted to grow up and experience the beautiful world of dating, as dating is one big mystery, I guess. Um, and then I was in special education uh, during that time, and there were three other kids in the class that in that called themselves friends, but. It was like they, they they formed a clique because they were not on the autism spectrum themselves. And they would get together on the weekends and um, exclude me. And then when they would come back to class, come back. Um, one of them, who I sort of had a, had a huge crush on, came up to me and would boast, Guess what, Maya? Me, me and me and them um, X and Y got together and uh, went out to this new pizza restaurant or we went out for coffee or we went and saw the greatest movie together and yet I was never included and so I finally um, had the uh, courage to ask one of the other people why I uh, was uh, was excluded and they said well they're nice to your face but uh, they really don't like you that much because you're different <laughs> so and then um, I had worked at Valley Fair for a while, which is an amusement park up in Minnesota where I grew up. And uh, I seemed to hit it off pretty well with other people that I worked with. But again, I really wasn't invited anywhere. I wasn't included. And, uh, you know, and w when I lost that job, I got into an argument with several of those people. And I asked them what, I mean, I, mean, I yelled at them for excluding me. And uh, they, and one of them uh, said, uh, well, I was going to invite you, at, but uh, the other people in my group said no because they thought you were too hard to handle because you were too hyper, or you were different. And so, again, I was excluded. And then when I had lived with my two roommates, I had tried to, uh, Matt, tried to get, tried to get a, get a bunch of people together for a, um, for a New Year's party. And um, a bunch of them refused and made a bunch of excuses that they had to work the next day and yada yada. And then I found out that they had changed their story the next time I ran into them and they were, they were up at a party all night. So, um, and then when I came down here to Atlanta, I, uh, I started making friends when I, uh, when I, you know, when I was required to uh, do a work analysis or a work evaluation at a um, uh, at a sheltered workshop until I could get a regular job and to, to see whether or not I was able to work and I ended I was I ended up managing to make friends with one girl with special needs and we were friends for about eight years um, and it was around that time that I had joined a support group for other people with uh, Asperger's syndrome and I was able to make three friends out of the group um, and uh, then from there, I ended up uh, making, you know, making friends um, at, uh, with other people who went to an autism center, and uh, and I was, you know, and I was most recently friends with a girl for about uh, six years, and uh, uh, she and I eventually called it quits because uh, she got married and. Uh, she uh, she and I just had different interests, and then the relationship in itself was toxic, and uh, and on top of all that, while uh, while I was very hurt that uh, she chose to reject me, uh, she's not the only fish in the sea. I ended up uh, managing to make friends with uh, other people that I had met at those uh, at that autism center. And uh, you know, it's almost like we have developed a support system for each other, where we help one another out if we're sick, or if somebody goes to the hospital, or if some if someone gets married or has a baby, whatever. We're there for each other. And um, I have to say something uh, about you. If you struggle greatly with making friends, and uh, you want to learn new social skills, the best place to meet people 
is to go to uh, an autism center where they teach social skills because sometimes they can uh, throw uh, things like parties or they can go to baseball games or they can go uh, wherever. Even if you have to travel a great distance once a month, it, you know, it's still helpful. Uh, so, uh, my name is Maya Sundermeyer and uh, we are out of time. Uh, until next time, my, um, I'm signing off now. Bye.